We're getting a closer look today at the scope of the accusations against former Governor General Julie Payette. The report on her behavior at Rideau Hall came out last night. It's heavily redacted. It doesn't get into specifics, but it does paint a clear picture of what staffers say about the work environment on her watch. What's notable is the sheer number of employees and former employees describing a hostile workplace, rife with bullying, verbal abuse, and more. The report also calls for immediate action to fix the damage that's been done. Payette is set to continue to receive $150,000 a year in lifetime payments and an allowance up to $200,000 annually under the Governor General's Act. My next guest says this would never happen in the private sector and the government should change the laws if it wants to keep this from happening again. Howard Levitt is an employment lawyer and he joins me live in Toronto. Howard, good afternoon. Thanks, Carol. Delighted to be here. First of all, please explain how it is that a governor general can make so much money after being accused of bad behavior. What is it about the law that allows this? Because that's what the law of Parliament says, but it's not an inevitability. There's nothing preventing Parliament from either amending the act generally or saying in this particular case, she won't get a penny and that's what they should do. Okay, how Because in the could, private sector, she wouldn't get a penny. How, how could they do that, though, if it's part of the law? They can change the law. It's and as simple as that. Parliament enacted the law. Parliament can revise and amend the law. Okay, and what would the amendment law say? It would it would be an act of Parliament saying either revising it generally for all lieutenant governor, all governor generals, or it would be specifically about her and pass an act of Parliament saying that she will not receive severance. And if they did that, there is simply nothing she could do legally. Okay, here's the thing, though. She resigned. She resigned right? It was amidst accusations no. of bad behavior. She didn't resign. She did. She we was all forced read the to resign. I know. But she as was forced to resign. I know she That's was... a dismissal of law. Okay. I, I understand that she, you, we all believe she was forced to resign and for good reason. But looking yes. at the way it all came down, she could argue, nope, I left because it was a bad situation. There was nothing good for me to stay there, which she implied in her letter. She also said, and it's a, it's a good time for me to leave because my father is ill or a family member is ill. That happens with lots of executives yeah. and employees. They, they say they resign, but they haven't really resigned. A forced resignation is a dismissal of law. In any event, Carol, that's got nothing to do with the main point, which is that whether she resigned or was fired, Parliament can pass a motion saying that she doesn't get any severance or expenses. And there's nothing preventing her from doing that. And if they do that, she won't get a, a penny and she would have no legal recourse. I was thinking about this compared to uh, Rod, Rod Baker, the CEO, the casino CEO mogul, who also left his job. He resigned after he was caught trying to get past the line in the Yukon to get his shots. Well, they, he and his wife actually did yes. that. He would have received $4.3 million in cash severance based on salary and bonus if he, and his employer says this, if he signed for, off for a good reason if he resigned for a good reason. Is that the way it works in the private sector? And who determines what is a good reason? No, resign for good reason actually has legal meaning. It means a constructive dismissal. It means you're humiliated, oppressed, treated badly, demoted, and therefore you had a good reason to resign at law, not in a practical dictionary sense. So that's what they're talking about. That's common in employment contracts, especially if executives, you have a clause, you, if you're fired, you get a certain amount of money, or if you resign for good reason, meaning a constructive dismissal, you get the same amount of money. Yeah. If someone is, is making accusations against you, as in the case with the governor general, isn't it a bad precedent that just the accusations alone could result in you losing a livelihood if you're leaving? Well, I, I suspect that is true. But there was a full investigation. We haven't seen the report, unfortunately, redacted 80% of it. But if there's good cause, and obviously the parliamentary committee can see the full report, we can't, as members of the public. There's probably too many individual and personal details involving many of the complainants, as well as the governor general. They can make a decision over whether she's entitled to severance or deserves it. And from everything we've heard, she doesn't. All right. Well, we'll see what the government decides. We know part of her severance is under review. Employment lawyer Howard Levitt, thanks for explaining the law to us. Thank you for joining us today. Carol, delighted to be here. Thank you. Okay.